Hi. So I saw a couple of Chevy Volts yesterday. First time. Um, they were being hauled on Interstate 12, so they were probably just cutting through Louisiana. So I don't know if that counts, but I'm pretty sure it was three of them on the truck. So first time seeing a boat. Um, I also got the invitation to the new date for the Tesla Semi event. Um, I'm looking at it and it looks like I can just enter anyone else's name and just put in a, and use my own email address and the other person will get theirs sent to them. But I'm not 100% sure if it'll work. So, I mean, I I can give it away and we can try to see if the person will get in, but I would hate to have someone go to Fremont and and not be able to get into the event. Uh, also, Thursday, I went to the Louisiana Clean Fuels Stakeholder Awards meeting, and that was, that was interesting. Um, they talked a little bit about the Volkswagen um, settlement and how the state gets $18 million for that to use on clean energy type stuff. And which isn't a lot, cause it was based. It's based on the amount of Volkswagen diesel vehicles you have on the road at the time, and we really didn't have that many in Louisiana. Like um, for comparison, I think California got about 800 million. And the the gist of the whole thing is they were giving out awards for companies that have fleet vehicles that were basically switching to uh, renewable energy and clean powered vehicles. They are also currently in plans within the next two to three years of getting fast charging throughout Louisiana and surrounding states, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Texas. Um, they're, um, they're planning to have, I think it was Interstate 10, 12, 59, 55, 49, and 20 to be covered for high speed charging. And this is all outside of the Tesla network, which doesn't count toward it because it only charges Tesla vehicles. Now they didn't. They didn't mention specifics, but I, I would imagine they're talking about the chatter mode connectors every 50 miles along the interstates. They also talked a little bit more about the changes that were made to the Louisiana state um, tax credits for electric vehicles. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this in my last updated vid video, but in 2022, those will be going away entirely. And there is a little conflict between the way it was worded. I know I mentioned that it, it was worded poorly, but there, there's a little conflict with the timeline that they have in there and either being 1500 or 2500. It seems like they meant 1500, but um, Louisiana Clean Fuels is waiting for clarification on that. Yeah. So I'll update the video if that changes. Um, besides that, pretty much everyone who was at the Baton Rouge drive electric week event was at this event also so we're coming like a we're turning to a little crew so look forward to seeing all you guys at the next event they also had a van there i don't remember if it was converted to propane or or natural gas or whatever it was but it was really intriguing to me because i'd never seen one before and like, the guy was really nice. He let me get in and look at how, how the tanks were in the floor and how all the connections were under the, the, um, under the hood. It was really interesting. I think he said it cost like $5,000 to do. I'm so used to seeing electric vehicles at these events. I, I always forget about the converted vehicles and the other nine petroleum and diesel powered vehicles as of right now the federal tax credit still appears to be going away by the end of the year i would say you still have a little time to order now and receive delivery before the end of the year for for new vehicle but if you are relying on the tax credit i would consider looking into the new inventory vehicles um, they're on the website uh, right now. They got one for 77.2. It qualifies for the full tax credit. Um, 
Uh, I think it was a pearl white one, which is a really pretty color. Oh, and before I go, I thought I should throw in a supercharger tip. Um, one thing you might want to do is maybe check the supercharger before you plug in and just just make sure the, the cable looks okay before you just jam it into your car. I have a video that I made at the Baton Rouge Supercharger. They have one that's that was broke the last time I went to it. I haven't checked to see if they've gotten around to fixing it from the um, the messes I left them. But the inside of the um, the inside of the adapter, there, there are two holes, and they have these little prongs in them. And the tip of one of the prongs was broke. I don't I don't know if you can see it really well in the video, but I think that was what caused it to stop charging for me uh, one time I was plugged in at that one. Okay, so here's something you should look for before you plug in at a supercharger. Look in the inside of here, how damaged it is. The little cap you see on this side is missing on this side, so every, anytime you plug in here, it's not going to charge properly. The last time I did, it charged for a little while and then it said it was unable to charge. It should look like this one right it should look like this one right here no no big broken pieces of plastic and the two end pieces are there they also have another supercharger at that location i don't remember which number it was but it wasn't opening the the charge port door so i played with it a little while and i ended up opening it manually and the charger worked fine so there's something to keep in mind too. Um, it's because it doesn't, just because it doesn't open the door doesn't mean the charger doesn't work. It just means something's wrong with that little button. And I kind of prefer that one now because I know a lot of people probably try to use the button and they just give up on that one and go to another one. So that's probably gonna turn into my favorite one being a slight germ freak that I am. I know less people are touching that one. But that's all I have for now. Like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments.